was a rather emotional couple of days. And I forgot to turn on my tree. That's how emotional it was. I forgot to turn on my tree. Um, so, it always kind of, not bothers me, but I do find it mildly annoying that considering I had a whole year to prepare the previous two videos that I did. And I do think about them, you know, on and off throughout the course of the year. Partly because, you know, they are very important, but also I want to make sure that I say the right thing. Or say in a way that's, you know, conducive to uh, the message that I'm trying to promote here. But each year, I swear, I always wind up forgetting to say something or warn something appropriately that I feel, again, is conducive to what I'm saying. I mean, the message does come across, eventually. You just gotta go through, at this point, over two hours. Consider this year, you have to go over two hours of material to get it, you know? Um. So, I guess this video is my opportunity to sort of clear the air on several things. Specifically, considering everything that happened from March of 2003 to December 14, 2008. It really does, you know, beg the question, do I look fondly on any of that period at all? What is, whatever happened that it could promote something good or is there anything that was you know, salvageable. And I keep asking myself this because looking back on it, there's no way I could ever say every single day that I was ever in special ed was outright horrible. Because that's not remotely true. There were some good days I did have. And there were some, there are some things that I look finally back on. It's just that they have nothing to do with special ed at all. Any good thing that happened, happened away from that. And I did mention how every day I was in special ed was immediately a bad day. Keep in mind, that's like my old anger and rationale speaking for me in that moment. I mean, you remember, some days were absolutely horrible, don't get me wrong. But, at best, it was mildly annoying. Which doesn't really sound that bad, but have enough days in a row in which the same thing winds up being mildly annoying and you wind up having a big problem. So, again, there are a few things I do legitimately need to clear the air on. I mean, first off, what ultimately got me in trouble and in school suspension then was the fact that I said, I'm gonna kill you to you know, those kids are being mean to me. And absolutely, it's it's something I never should have said. If we're being honest, though, the only reason why I said it was because I had, I had heard, I had seen and heard other people do it and they never got in trouble. So, kind of begs the question, what made me different, right? I don't know. 
But regardless, I never should have said it. It was wrong. It's stupid of me. And believe me, looking back on it, yeah, I'm lucky all I got was a school suspension. I mean, let's be honest, we live in a day where school shootings happen how often now? Which is really sad, but it's no wonder why there are so many strict rules now. Much more strict, arguably, than there were then. I mean, my father's generation, you could, you were allowed to bring guns and bats into school, but nobody would care. It ain't like that anymore. So, I guess in a lot of ways that's progress. Um, regarding the uh, incident where one of the kids who was also in the uh, in special education, I had called retard. Again, yes, I never should have called him that. I would. Here's the thing, I've always operated under the obvious idea that there are variations of, you know, there are varying degrees of evil, okay? I mean, yes, retard is a bad word. It's a triggering word that is stupid, it's horrible, and no one wants to hear it. I agree with that. But again, I grew up in a household where, you know, my father is a pretty tall, six foot two, burly man who, believe me, when he got angry, he got angry. And he didn't want to be at the other end of that. So, yeah, saying the word retard is bad, but swearing is much worse. You know, dropping the F-bomb is worse. In the grand scheme of things, retard seemed kind of harmless at the time. I mean, yes, there are more words that are harmless. That can still be insulting. You know, idiot. That's a much less harmful word than retard is. While still having the ability to insult someone. If you really want to be smart about it, you could call them an ignoramus. I used to say, if you don't know what an ignoramus is, then you are an ignoramus. <laughs> Another thing about being special ed that really bothered me was, there were, and keep in mind, this is something I myself never should have done. But sometimes I would get bad grades, but I wouldn't tell my folks about it. There were times where my parents found out about those bad grades anyway, because those special education teachers would email my parents, which that always bothered me. There were even times where my parents found out about my grades before I did. That's how, that's how stupid it got. I mean, yeah, I know my parents are worried about me, but my father especially, like, I would literally have just taken a test, and he's like, what'd you get on it? I just took the test. It's going to be at least a day before I hear anything. So, then again, my father has always been kind of worried, well, not kind of, he always has been worried about me. I mean, back when I was in college, he'd call me every single day. And again, this is during the period of time where I would actively not tell my mom and dad I love them. So if he ever called, you know, I, I wouldn't even bother answering. Trust me, when I can get, listen, I know it comes across as I'm a nice guy, but believe me, when I can get mad, I can get angry, real angry. 
It's only by the grace of God I've been able to calm myself down at times. And plus, at the end of the day, I am a bit of a pacifist at heart. It's honestly one of the main reasons why, as much as I love playing football and doing wrestling, I really wasn't as good as I probably could have been. I mean, don't get me wrong. And that's another thing. Doing sports, that's definitely a time I can legitimately look fondly on. Really and truly. Because, well, probably because I was out of the room. But also, it gave me an opportunity to go out and meet and see new people. Which is honestly, which, okay, listen, it's no secret that the special education system in our country is absolute dog shit. Everyone knows that. I think what's bothering me the most about it is you want to teach these kids to socialize and function in the real world, but you're teaching these kids how to do that, but you're not letting them go out and do it. I mean, is there anything I can do to fix the problem? Well, that largely depends on how much your kid would really need specialized is the thing. Because let's say that for the sake of argument that I actually was on the spectrum, which I clearly explained that I'm not. A daily check-in, possibly, maybe, maybe twice a day, like early in the morning before school starts, and then at the end of the day. Like that's when that's when that should happen. At least if, you know, you're someone who's, you know, clearly thinking straight like I am. I mean, let's be real here. Some students legitimately need specialized. If they're like making like funny sounds, can barely talk, or legitimately have the symptoms of autism, they need specialized. Absolutely they do. And that was one of the main problems, you know. There were some kids who were, albeit high functioning, that really were like that. And that's why it was so insulting that I was there. Because, I mean, you've seen me make over 1,800 videos at this point. You know I'm not like that. You can't compare that to me. And there were times where I swear it got to be really insulting to the point where I really could never be looked at seriously. Or there were things that I was denied in which I should have gotten, but because of the whole special education thing, I didn't. One of the worst examples of this, and to this day it still haunts me, was by the time I was a freshman in high school, one thing I actually did pride myself in being was a pretty great singer. Which I also have to say, doing choir, that was another thing that I can look fondly on. But the way that Horace Heads High School did it at the time, I don't know if it does it now, but at the time, there was um, Select Chorus and Concert Choir. Select Chorus is the choir that pretty much everyone does, but Concert Choir is, you know, the more advanced stuff. Like, the best of the best singers that go, that, that are in the school, they get to be in that choir, right? Naturally, of course, now audition for Concert Choir. You would think it would, you think it would, without, fa without fail, in my graduating class, as a freshman, I was the best singer in my, gra in my class. At least for the guys. I mean, I can make an argument for overall by the time I was a senior. Maybe I'll get to that in a minute. But without question, the best singer, my, the best guy singer was me. So you can imagine how completely devastated I was when I didn't get concert choir, when I didn't get in the concert choir that year. Here's where it gets much more insulting. Because the choir teacher's reasonings for why, because my audition for concert choir, well, I sang the Star Spangled Banner. 
And I was pretty solid at it. Needless to say, after this, I didn't sing the Star, the Star Spangled Banner for quite a while. But the choir teacher's reasonings for why I didn't get in were the first one, I didn't really do enough. I, I wasn't really mature enough or anything. Which, okay, there are kids in that choir that are like person like sailors and talking about smoking weed. Sometimes with you present in the room. Maybe not legit, maybe, maybe not to the point where you could hear them, but they were like talking about that sort of stuff. And you're telling me that they're actually more mature enough to be in concert choir than I am? And here's where it gets even more insulting. His other reason was, because the choir teacher was a guy. His other reason was, I didn't, I didn't audition for enough solos or whatever. Well, first of all, in that entire year, there were maybe two, three opportunities at most to audition for any kind of solo. And I auditioned for them all. I didn't necessarily get them, but I auditioned for them. But that's not all. Where it really irks me even now is there were guy singers in my grade who wound up getting in the concert choir and they didn't even do choir at all that year. In fact, they were band students. Yes, band students that weren't even remotely in the choir room whatsoever. They get in concert choir over me. Okay, look, I'm willing to make, I'm willing to bet that sure, a good band player could be a pretty decent singer considering if you know how to read music, it's all pretty universal, I suppose. But, come on, I'm a better, I'm a better singer than any of those band people waking up in the morning. You mean to tell me they get in, but I don't? I mean, I mean, I was mad at this kind of, I was mad at my choir teacher for a in, in some ways, I still am mad now, but man, there was a time where I would actively pretend. It, it'd, be like, it'd be that sort of anger where I really didn't come across it, but like in my head, like, okay, this is just insulting. And I've, and I've always theorized that the real reason why I didn't get in concert choir was because my sophomore year, there were a few people who were in special ed that were doing choir too, slash chorus, and they wanted to group us all together. That's why. Which not only insults my mental capacity, my mental, uh, my mental prowess, it also insults my singing ability. Cause that's just not fair. I mean, my sophomore year, I would eventually make concert choir. Because, you know, I you know, auditioned for concert choir until the end of the year. Which reminds me, there was one girl who was a freshman in my class who was in concert choir from the beginning. And not only did I never really see her in choir in 7th and 8th grade, I'll be honest, this girl wasn't even that great. Think, you know what? Think Russell Crowe from Ray, from Lay Miz. That's what this girl was sounded like. I'm not even kidding. Oh, okay. Let me. That's not entirely fair, because it's it's not like she was bad or anything. It's just when you get down to it, this one particular girl could was able to stay in tune and she could phrase her melodies, which is what a good singer should do. But this girl is in like a rock band and she tried using that sort of rough, sort of booming, powerful voice that a rocker has. 
And when you're trying to sing the kind of music that you do in concert choir, it's easy to spot a faker. So take that for what it's worth. Not bad, but come on. I can sing better than this person. It's not even close. So my point is, when I finally made, seriously, if I didn't make concert choir my sophomore year, and keep in mind, I didn't start swearing it until I was 17. If I didn't make concert choir, oh, man, I was going to let that choir teacher have it. Like, I, I, I was going to be dropping some that bombs, man. Things were about, things were going to get messy, trust me. But I made concert choir, and yeah, I, I mean, maybe I am still a little bit mad about the whole concert choir thing myself, and that is on me, but I just look at that time as feeling the most insulted, and that's just not fair. It's just, it's just stupid, I guess. To make matters worse, when I finally made concert choir, I was ready to have this guy as my is my chorus teacher for that too. Like junior and senior year, we're gonna be like the best years ever, even despite despite me being in special ed. In spite of being in, sp in spite of being in special ed, choir alone was gonna help save junior and senior year. It was only be, and it was gonna be because of this choir teacher. And then the choir teacher got fired. Which kind of makes me question the validity on a lot of things. But there you go. Between sports and doing choir, again, I got to be out there and meet a lot of people. Some people I know to this day, and I'm very happy for it. But between how, and this is the thing about sports too. There were times I really would do good in sports, but I swear I would hear parents of people who I would beat in wrestling and stuff like that say, you let that kid beat you? which implies somehow they knew I wasn't special ed. Which, okay, lady, you don't know who I am or what I do, what I know, or what I'm capable of. And you're already going to insinuate that I'm not a good person because of that? Are you kidding me? Oh, sometimes it was someone's mom, but other times it was, you know, another person's dad. But give credit where credit's due. I may not have been that great at sports, but I did learn a few things from it. Things that, I think I learned more in one day of playing sports than all, than the entire time I was in special ed. Because it taught me things that not even regular school teaches you. How to build character. How to meet and interact with people. Or great, yet, just how to have fun. That's honestly why, no matter how good a person is at sports, you know, get out there and at least try something. You'd be surprised what you wind up taking from it. And sure enough, by the time I got to Trinity Poly, those happy times from horse heads, you know, the choir and doing sports, and actually the regular, the, the classes that I took. Like, that was, that was easily, again, I mean, yeah, I mentioned how horrible the special education faculty was. But the other teachers I had, I have no problems with whatsoever. Some of the most extraordinary people I've ever known in my entire life are the very teachers that I had. In fact, it's no surprise that some of those teachers are still teaching today. And any of them who are retired have been remembered, have been remembered fondly forever. I still remember them fondly, actually. So when I tell you that the Horace Head School District had great teachers, I'm being serious. 
and it's just the special education teachers that were shit at the time. And that's not fair for me to say. Maybe at some point during their careers, they did care about what they did and what they wanted to do for a living. But when I was there, I didn't see it at all. And that really bothers me. Then again, I was too pissed off about the fact that I was there. So why would I care what they think? I cared so little about what was going on in their personal lives. Not that they, not that they, not that they explain what their personal lives are, but the special education teacher I had in seventh and eighth grade would eventually get married during my time in high school. For the life of me, I couldn't tell you what her married name is because I don't like this person. So why do I care to learn what her name is now? Again, it really does seem short-sighted, but that really was the mindset I had then. And maybe a little bit now, but I've been pretty good about what I told myself all those years ago, in which, you know, after I graduated horseheads, I'm never seeing these people ever again. And, you know, over 14 years, I still haven't seen them. So, I've been pretty good about that. <laughs> Although, um, okay. If any of you have seen the show Seinfeld, if, if you've ever seen the Festivus episode, like the Festivus airing of grievances, trust me, if I ever saw those faculty again, believe me, imagine the Festivus airing of grievances, but with a lot of swearing. Like, I got a lot of things to say to those people, and believe me, they were going to hear it. It's probably coming across that, you know, and I, and I did try to, I tried to explain this on Tuesday, but I really do believe that there are people out there who want to become special education teachers and they love doing it. Like that is the thing they look forward to the most every day. And not just simply because it's a means of putting food on the table and paying bills and taking care of your families, putting a roof over your head. They do it because they care. And they do it because they want to. I really do want to believe that there are people like that out there. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, I ran, I wouldn't be surprised if you know, you don't really, if there really, there's new faculty, of course, that is actually, I wouldn't be surprised that was the case because again, that's how bad the faculty were when I was there, at least to me. And the sad part is, and I explained this last year too, when I was at Trinity College, I had one teacher who started off really cool because it was when I took what was called the Asian Trilogy class. It was a series of three classes. It was um, Asian history, Vietnam War, and U.S. Asia relations, relations in the 21st century. It was during the Vietnam class where, because this was, because this was entirely a discussion-based class, but there was like one time where like no one was discussing anything and I was trying to contribute to obviously you know discussing everything but this one teacher says Nick you need to shut up you started off smart in the beginning of the year but now you've been saying stupid shit yes that teacher at Trinity Pauling said that to me keep in mind my parents are paying near 50 grand for me to be there and a teacher is insulting me like that trust me it took all I have for me not to leave the room. I'm not remotely surprised at all that that teacher's not there anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if he's not teaching anymore, period.
I still think that teacher is actually better than the teachers I had when I was in special ed. No joke. Because you know what? The one thing I can say about the Asian trilogy teacher I had at Trinity Poly, while he did insult me, he never actually tried talking down to me like the special education teachers did. The, the, yeah, the, the teacher at Trinity Poly I'm talking about was the guy. He never really, because if you've ever seen, you know, an adult talking down to a child, it looks, it feels and looks so degrading. And that's what special education was for me. And no matter how much I try to ignore all of that, there was just no end to how horrible I would feel every day I was there. Which is why the whole idea of contemplating suicide, not really a bad idea at the time. There were times where I would go to the bathroom and keep on, I'm on, I'm on the second story of horse heads. And I would look out the open window into the quad where the parking lot is. And I was just thinking that, I would always think of that one episode of Spongebob where Spongebob is shrinking everybody. Patrick is holding Squidward. Squidward's looking down off of Patrick's hand. And he's like, I wonder if a fall from this height would be enough to kill me. That was literally me. I really was thinking, would a fall from this height do me in? Which, um, you may want to consider, Horton says high school, if you're watching this, you may want to consider maybe having your windows not completely closed because sometimes it would be really hot and maybe you want the window open. But don't open them so much that a person could fit through there. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Oh. Sorry. I had to get up very early to do these videos because I really don't have a lot to say. Um, I guess another thing I could definitely look fondly on, and keep in mind, it would take me until 2019 to realize the significance of this. Because when I was at Trinity Poly, I mentioned how there was this one kid who called me an autistic retard. And keep in mind, I didn't tell him anything. And of course it didn't, I never would have acknowledged that he was right. When I say he figured out the old fashioned way, what I mean is he guessed and he rolled with it. And there really was nothing I could do about it because full disclosure, this guy was the, he was the strongest person I'd ever seen. No joke. He was the textbook definition of a bully. Bigger than me, faster than me, stronger than me, in every way. I mean, I dealt with some bad people at horse heads, to be sure. But at the time, thinking about this guy scared the hell out of me. If you recall, shortly after I went to my 10-year Trinity Pond reunion, I actually finally forgave him. And my reasoning for it wound up being, at this point, he has a wife and child. He lives all the way on the other side of the country in Washington, I believe. And furthermore, it had been well over 10 years since I'd even seen the guy, much less heard from him, and even, even less insulted, being insulted from or insulted by him. So, considering all those factors, that's why I forgave him. 
And because here's the thing, he actually friended me on Facebook. I would never have sought this guy out. He's he, he friended me on Facebook, okay? And I had to really think over, do I really want to accept this friend? I don't know. What I mean, I know it sounds silly as, you know, a simple Facebook friend request. But if you knew how bad this guy was, you'd understand why I'm thinking this. I was actually able to forgive him after 10 years. So I friended him on Facebook and he's actually been nice, real nice. In fact, his son's birthday is on December 28th. That's my birthday too. How can I be mad at that? Find it really nice. Real nice. And to think, had I actually contemplated suicide, there is a fuck ton I could have missed out on. I should probably, I should probably, um, I should probably put a thing in the description of this video that there's going to be some swearing in this video, sorry. But this is the way, it's honestly the only way I can be the most brutally honest. The, honestly, the most way I can be honest. That's rather redundant. Um, where was I? Yeah, this... He, the person who I thought was like the worst person ever, and I forgave them. And if I could forgive them, I could pretty much forgive damn near anyone. And I wound up doing that. Remember the wedding I I was at in September, my my uh, neighborhood friend's wedding. Well, it turns out there was one person who was there who. Before Trinity Pauling, there was one guy at Horseheads who I really didn't care for at all. And that wedding was the first time I had seen him in probably 14, 15 years. And after I let go of all that hatred and anger towards him, I forgot how nice he was. And funny he was. I I made it no secret that at that wedding I had cried. As soon as the ceremony was over, he actually like like well actually imagine like the hand is facing this way, but he like pats me on the shoulder. I'm thinking Did he see me cry or is that just like a good moment we're having? I didn't question it though because it was, it just, that moment just felt right. It felt right. And that's the thing that really makes me glad that I'm still here. Because there have been a boatload of moments that have been right. And I love that. I think it's so wonderful that everything I've done and experienced, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I got to do all that. I get to say I did all that. Um... There's probably a lot more I can say, and trust me, I really do want to talk more, but I still have to do two more videos of this, not to mention, it really is important I wait until 
What day is the 20th? I believe it's a, yeah, it's a Tuesday. So come next Tuesday, I'll be able to continue this further because yeah, a lot of good things have happened, but there is one bittersweet truth about life I really do want to get into. I don't want to talk about it here though. For now, I can say that the fact that I'm still here and have been able to do what I've done, whether it's run a marathon or make 1,809 videos or however many I've done so far, I get to say I did that. Actually, I think today maybe 810. I'll look it up later. My point is though, I, I got to do it. And I'm happy. Life may not be perfect, but at least, but I'm happy. I'll talk more on a Tuesday about that. So, all I can say right now is that I am beyond humbled. That I made this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for today. I'm hopeful that we have a wonderful Thursday. And I really do hope you take the message from not just today's video, but these last three and use it to help you if you're feeling down. Especially at this time of year. Because while many people in this country are so very blessed at this time of year, some people are as fortunate. And if you are one of those people, I really hope this gets you. This helps you somehow. And always remember, if you need to share your feelings, someone out there is gonna listen to you. I will. And sometimes all it takes is one person to hear you out. You know, have a wonderful day. And in the words of one of the best teachers I ever had at Horsehead's High School, make good choices. Have a nice day.